Hello everybody, this is Chaos and Comics. Uh, I am here today to talk about the um, mangaka, I don't know, I always say that wrong and I never know what I'm talking about, but the, the manga artist and writer Kaora Mori. And this is uh, something of a survey, I did recently use that when talking about DC Night Terrors books, so I'm going to do the same thing. Now, now I'm going to show you a bunch of books I haven't read. <laughs> That's what we're going to do now. Um, but I, I do want to take a survey of this. I was like trying to think of like uh, shoujo that I would like. I'm told that Junji Ito and uh, the other dude that does Drifting Classroom and all those other stuff, I'm told they're technically shoujo. So like in Japan, the teenage girl, the horror books, those disgusting horror books are like aimed at young girls apparently. So I don't know how that works. The more I read, uh, the more Japan gets interesting. And I mean, maybe I shouldn't be reading about Japanese culture through um, manga. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I wanted to read something that, you know, I would call shoujo. I wouldn't necessarily call those uh, Junji Ito that. But, uh, you know, I didn't want it to be very, very flowery. Um, I just uh, wanted to be a little bit more literary. So I found something like... Uh, I read about Koora Mori, and that seemed interesting. And it, you know, these are set in in the past, not even in Japan. Neither neither one of these. So what we're going to do here is, I'm going to do what I would have done at the library or something. I'm going to flip through it, and what I'm afraid of is I'm going to get what I'll call, and I like Hellfire Gala, but I'm going to get like Hellfire Gala syndrome, where I'm going to see some cool, um, intricate drawings that I like, uh, especially fashion wise. But then the majority of the book uh, is going to be the talking head kind of stuff. Um, so I may or may not read it, or I may not be sure, and then I'll go read more about it separately. So let's get this so it's right in the middle here. And let's start. So I don't know much about her. In fact, whatever I did, I read. Yeah, see, that looks all awesome and intricate and stuff, but let's see what goes on. It's the first page. So obviously that grabbed me immediately. I don't know where I read about her or what made me go, okay, I need to go check out Bride Story. I know that it was set in, um, I think this is set in Turkey. I can't remember. But um, I guess, and I'm gonna go through this really quick. Um, you know, I guess this is a uh, a story about a, a wife that's given away or something like that. The art in here is actually really beautiful. So there's still maybe a Hellfire Gala syndrome here, but um, chapter one at least looks pretty exciting to me. She's hunting here, so she's uh. She's showing that she knows what to do. She's might, she might be from like the steps or something like that. So she, she's a woman that knows how to hunt with a bow and uh, all these royals, they don't know what they're doing. I don't know if she's like in a harem either. That'd be interesting. I did read a book based on um, Turkish history. It was a fantasy book, but it was based on like the same way like Lord of the Rings, you know, has a, a uh, the drawings here are beautiful, has a British medieval feel. This is a, a fantasy book that had a, a Turkish historical feel. There's definitely harems in that book. I don't know if she's in the harem here. I do get the little bit of talking head stuff. So there, you know, something like character development will be important here. But the art is like consistent and beautiful across the board that it's keeping me interested just flipping through. Um, so we'll see. There's chapter three in one. And what we'll do next is... Uh, actually look at Emma and we'll see if we do the first one. These are, it is actually very good. It is actually very good art. This is better than a lot of manga out there. Um, oh, she's hunting again. She did it. Good job. You got your food. Uh-oh. Hopefully I'm not going to any spoilers. Well, I'm going to go into spoilers, right? But I'm generally okay with that. We'll see how this is built. So this is, by the way, the harder stuff to read like um, as a second language, like if you're learning Spanish or I'm always, I'm perpetually learning Spanish, ooh, boobies, perpetually learning Spanish and uh, Polish. And so I'll buy, I buy manga because that's what's available. And this would be a tough one to read um, in Polish, especially. I have uh, like Minlin Saga and a couple other things like that. But the action book's okay. You get like sort of a rest and... Um, you know, if you're pre-intermediate or intermediate, you can sort of figure out what's going on uh, for the words that you don't know. Uh, this one this one would be tough if I went and bought Bride Story in, in Polish. Probably a little bit better in Spanish. Oh, look what we're doing. 
take care of herself, guys. She could take care of herself. She is a strong, independent woman. The cold, these uh, opening pages, the perspective um, and the symmetry are beautiful. And this wasn't the first one. This one has like the full perspective of the of the room and stuff. But uh, I actually think that I can. I actually think that even though it is a, a very talking headish thing, what with the action that we've seen her is on the hunts, right? That I think that this can build into something good. And I don't know. This is one of those things I would read really slow. I rarely finish these manga chapters. Something else interests me, and I start looking at those. Um, I can't remember how many brides. How many brides story um yeah that doesn't look like much of a cliffhanger but it is what it is right how many bride story volumes there are but there are a few let's go to emma now we'll, we'll look at uh we'll look at uh volume two in a moment and i got emma because you know when i looked up koura mori uh her emma popped up too and i can be i'll be honest the, this one interested me a little bit more when i read the um the summary. So acclaimed uh, creator Kurumori, Emma and Shirley, uh, brings the 19th century Silk Road to lavish life, chronicling the story of uh, Amir Halgal, a woman from a nomadic tribe betrothed to a 12-year-old boy, eight years her junior. Coping with the cultural differences, blossoming feelings uh, for her new husband, and expectations from both her adoptive and birth families, Amir strives to find her role as she settles into a new life and a new home in a society quick to define that role for her. Crafted in painstaking detail, uh, Ms. Mori's pen breathes life into the scenery and architecture of the period in this heartwarming slice of life tale that is at once both wholly exotic yet familiar and accessible through everyday lives of rich characters she has created. So that, I read something like that. It was very interesting. Now, Emma... I'm sure maybe we'll read that. Maybe we won't. I'm, I don't want to really flip through all of Emma. Seemed less interesting because it's just about English maid. But um, who knows? Maybe it's good too. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, from a, you know, you know, you know, I do that too much. From a perspective of my own reading, I've, I've obviously read far more literature from England than I have from the Silk Road. So uh, maybe this is going to have a nice little feel of... A nice little like Jane Austen feel to it or something. I'm not really sure what to do with that. So uh, art is fine, but it's still very talking. Looks talking headish to me, right? So she, there's so many so much action you can do if you're a maid in England, you know. So I'm sure these characters build fine. Uh, I think I would have to be very impressed with Bride Story, and I don't know how long that that goes to uh, come back and read this and be like, hey. I read shoujo too. Um, you could see how good of an artist she is, even in this older book. Uh, but I really do like look how beautiful that is. I really do like um, the art later on. So she's grown also too to be more dynamic and more <coughs> interesting. Uh, let's do a little flip through and not do bride story. We'll continue on from that. So this one's a little bit weird because it's not a much of a review, but it does have a nice, eh, you know, I get the, the Jane Austen feeling from this, but this one is, this is what I was afraid that Bride Story was going to be. Like it's a lot more talking head, but I like the way I'm flipping through and I like the way that, um, you don't have, you don't necessarily need dialogue and stuff like that. So I actually enjoy that. I actually enjoy these longer pages where you're going to get uh, storytelling that doesn't always need a bunch of dialogue. So really open pages. Um, who knows what the tone and the feel is. Obviously, you have to have read the pages before and stuff. Okay. I don't know about this one. So I'm glad I did flip through it because this is one that I would feel... This is what I was afraid Bride Story was going to be when I flipped through it. Calling upon his... Former governess, William Jones, gentleman, is startled when his knock is answered by a commonly beautiful servant, the soft-spoken Emma. Throughout his visit, William's eyes drift to the maid whenever she enters the room, and he contrives to meet Emma socially as she goes about her errands. Oh, that sounds like about what I would expect, and it's the end. So it is all in one 
it is all in one uh, volume. You could read the whole story. Let's go last but not least, number two. Let's see what nice big sort of opening that we get from this one. Oh, it's Predator, guys. Uh, can't you just see the difference, the absolute difference in the draw, in her drawing and her skills? And line work. I mean, I guess it's way more intricate. Some people don't like it when it gets so intricate, but it's not like it's a bunch of. It's not like the shadowing is uh, with cross hatching or anything like that. Like she draws. She's drawing these patterns a lot. I almost wonder if it's a. If that's put in there digitally or something like that, because that's a lot of. That's a, a ton of it in this one. Oh, she's fighting and arguing. How many hunting scenes do you think we get in here? At some point, you just gotta go. Ah, she can hunt, bro, and leave it. Let it go. A bunch of swords. The battle. A battle. What's funny is they don't look like people from the Silk Road, right? Don't you? <laughs> Shouldn't the Silk Road people look very Indian or very Pakistani or very Chinese or something like that? I don't know. Um, but it's manga, right? So I guess the mo most manga you read, they don't look very Japanese either. So. I guess that's a that's a, a cartooning shtick for manga, and it's probably a good thing. So I don't see much of a battle here, but I do see some action and stuff. I don't know. I was very impressed with the first one. I like this one too, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna commit to here. Um, generally, I don't commit at all because most likely I'll read the first one and then go, wow, that was really good. I'm gonna continue reading this and then never get around to it. I can think of a few books that way. And I do like to read, um, I do like to read them in Polish or Spanish first or, and then buy the English version or check it out from the library. Uh, this one's a lot less, well, I guess there is some action in here. This one feels like there's a lot less going on, but then I, of course, as soon as I'm about to say that, I start flipping through some like great looking pages and panels and stuff. Um, I am pro keeping the Japanese sound effects here and then giving me like the little ga, wham, and this one says dosha, and that's the equivalent to thud. So I like that. I, I don't like it when um, we re-letter. So that's something that's happened in Akira, depending what version you have. And um, I, yeah, I'm, so I'm very, I'm a big fan of keeping that artist art and keeping it the spirit there because it's a lot of manga they remove this and they put it in english so uh so that one that piece is a little too localized for me hey baby are you in the bath the heart of a bride so we're gonna see uh i mean i guess this kid is 12 is that what it said that's a little weird huh so on another level it could this i could start reading this it starts to look weird you know it's a sign of the times right she's older and he's 12 it's like Starts falling in love with him. I don't, ah, that's uh, that sounds uh, like quite a unique story. So let's see how they do that. I haven't seen any uh, gross sex scenes or anything yet. Cloth preparations. Oh look, look who it is. I have no idea who that is. Little chibi girl. Okay, that's enough. So um, I think I am going to read this a bride story. I think it was at least going to go on my list. We'll see if I. We'll see if I get through any before it's due at the library. But uh, I actually like that. And I think I, for someone that wanted to dip his toe into sh shoujo, as the kids call it, I think I might have picked a really good one. If you guys have um, other things, like maybe you watch my videos and you know the kind of manga I already uh, read and the kind of comics I read and stuff like that. If you have a, a shoujo, and I know Junji Ito is technically shoujo. I don't want to hear about the horror bullshit. If you have one that you think that I would like, and recommend me you can um but i think this is a a worthy look otherwise manga wise you know i read a lot of like the garo stuff and um stuff that ryan holmberg translates i got like okinawa sitting on the to-go pile as i do offshore lightning as far as new stuff and boat life i mean that's the stuff i really like in manga but i did want to see um you know something that is a little bit more mainstream. And I really like the, I've, at least in this case, maybe if you recommend me something, I don't necessarily need something, a bride story that's, um, you know, uh, set in the past or something, or I forget what they call it, but I will take those recommendations. So thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time.